Hey guys, Life of That Fuzzball 70 here, hope you're all well. Today marks a, a bit of a moment on my channel. This is my 500th subscriber edition. And I thought, what better ship to pick than the Millennium Falcon? You guys will obviously know uh, the Millennium Falcon as being the ride for Mr. Han Solo. Life of That Fuzzball 70, uh, not the 70 part, but the Life of That Fuzzball 70 at least, is a line from Han Solo in the film. And I suppose as a kid, he was the guy that I really wanted to be. Han Solo. I mean, how cool was that guy? Got his girl in the end, blasted his way through the galaxy, had a really, really loyal friend next to him. Cool ship. Uh, does life get any better? But pro Probably not, but yeah, he's the guy. Before I actually show you the Million Falcon, I just want to say a really, really big thank you to all my subscribers, all my friends, all the feedback, all the comment, all the likes, all the support, indeed, that I've received over the last... Uh, when May of this year, so May until now. It's been amazing. I've had an amazing journey. Long may it continue. It's something I love doing, something I look forward to doing. Really, really look forward to seeing all you guys' vids, your comments, and obviously seeing your collections grow. I feel like we've got a really, really tight-knit, cool community on here, and uh, I wouldn't swap it for the world. So once again, guys, thank you very much for all your support. It's really, really appreciated. Right, the Millennium Falcon. What can I tell you about this Millennium Falcon? Not much that you probably don't already know, but I'll have a go anyway. The one here we see is on the Empire Strikes Back box. The picture behind your, your noticed more eagle-eyed of you is from the 1979 Star Wars box, literally as the film switched over from 79 to 80 around that period of time. They just simply changed the logo initially, and in 81 gave it a different backdrop. They actually put like a Bespin Cloud City in, uh, for the Empire Strikes Back, and in '83 changed it over again to a, I guess a backdrop. It's a hard one, but I suppose you'd best liken it to um, Tatooine somewhere around there. The ship, which a lot of people think probably came out earlier, didn't. '77, um, everything was a bit of a rush, and they weren't they weren't really prepared for the toys or the toy demand that was going on. Incidentally, companies had tried to uh, align toys with their film releases previously to that. But one way or another, it had never really took off. So that's really why the production, the the, the studios actually signed off to George Lucas quite easily because they, they didn't really see a value in the rights to the, the merchandising and uh, the franchising of uh, the toy lines. They didn't see that it was going to hold a great value. And we all know how wrong they were there. But yeah, so this is the 1979 Millennium Falcon, as you can see here. I'll show you the box. What I'm going to do, because obviously... I'm renowned for these one-handed, try-and-do-it-all vids. I won't move the box, but I'll just probably take a close-up so you can actually have a look. You'll see some stormtroopers there. One kid looking on kind of really, really pleased with himself. The big feature being the battle alert sound. I have no batteries in my Millennium Falcon, guys, so please don't be disappointed. There'll be no sound today. On top of the box, you can see here... Um, we've got a, our action, the other action features are the swiveling radar dish, the front cockpit, cockpit holds two action figures, landing gear folds and locks into place, and the battle alert sound. Action figures not included. Palatoy was the UK company which ultimately under license from Kenner produced in the UK the Star Wars brand at the time. You can see here. You can see Luke in his gun chair R2 and Chewie having a confrontation over the chest set and Han and Chewie in the cockpit right onto the Millennium Falcon itself ok well you know to start with he's been slightly ravaged from time as you can imagine um, gone slightly yellow but uh, pretty much everything is here that needs to be here I'll let you look into the cockpit. It opens to the side. Hopefully you can see there. But only space the two, so nothing like the BMF that we see these days. Has the rotating cannon on top. Making a noise. The radar dish that we come to expect at the front. And inside. We have the smugglers compartment. This is slightly slightly remoulded over the period of time. The Millennium Falcon itself actually didn't change. Um, the mould didn't change for its whole five-year toy run. It really was what they brought out in 79, 
stayed with us until they finished it in 84, early 85. You can see the chess table. Most of the stickers remain inside. And there's the, the gunner's chair. Stickers at the back. And you can just see the, the ramp section there. Has a battery cover to the side where you can obviously slot the batteries in for the battle sounds. Underneath, you can see the legs. The leg at the front um, was also sort of dual use. It was actually used to actually hold it in flight, obviously, when you're actually playing with it as a kid. Whereas the ones at the back sort of fold up and slot inside there. But yeah, that's a 1979 Millennium Falcon on the Empire, the the very early Empire card before they actually switched the backdrop over. Once again, as always saying all these things, your thought, feedback and comment are really, really appreciated. And just another further shout to you guys. 500 subscribers, wow. You blow me away. It's been amazing, yeah? Really, really appreciate your help. Thanks for your support and, and, and thanks, thanks mostly for your, for your friendship. Cheers, guys. Until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.